It's, it's not, it's not a, a sin to say Jesus. You have found favor with Elohim, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Yehoshua. Nah, I think I'll go with tradition. I'll call his name Jesus. What? Um, you know, we come up with our own religious traditions, which are often not a bad thing. Tradition can be a very good thing. You know, I, I have many traditions, my family has many traditions that we observe uh, revolving around the feast days and the Sabbath. But the problem is when we insist that it must be a certain way for everyone else. The problem is that when we insist that it must be a certain way for everyone else, and we turn our traditions into laws. There's a uh, tradition in the messianic slash Torah keeping movement, whatever we want to call ourselves. And that tradition, it's a very popular tradition of using Hebrew <coughs> words and names. Now, I personally enjoy this tradition. I think it's a very meaningful tradition. I like to call my Messiah by the name that his mother probably called him, which is Yeshua. And so I say that instead of Jesus most of the time. That's just my preference. Now, I've been watching 119 Ministries since they began, and I agree with most of their doctrine, but this is one of their few teachings I cannot agree with. Well, let's just examine this idea apart from anything scriptural. First, if I call you by your name, is that tradition, or is it a factual recognition of who you have been named, usually by your mother or father? Well, this forms part of our personal identification. We generally do not confuse people by changing our names every day according to our preference. Although that may be the next thing, seeing some people cannot decide what gender they are these days. <laughs> exactly. Now we know that our Savior's name was given to him from the Father above delivered by Gabriel. It was commanded. You shall. You shall call him Yehushua. It was not a suggestion or tradition, but a command. The meaning of his name was then explained by Gabriel. In most languages, a name is important, it has a meaning. In Hebrew, it is especially so for names. Yahweh even changed the name of Abraham to Abraham. You change the name, you change the very meaning. This is important in bringing splendor to Yahuwah and fulfilling his purpose and is not subject to our own preference. Miriam obeyed and named him as commanded and not according to her own preference. It's, it's not, it's not a, a sin to say Jesus. Well, we know what the definition of sin is, don't we? Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices Torahlessness. Sin is Torahlessness. And so you can see how easy it is. I mean, even us, you know, we, we, we pride ourselves as messianics, as Torah keepers. We want to go back to the book. We're done with the traditions of men. We want to get back to the scriptures. But even among people like us, you know, who, who, that's, our, that's our desire. It's so easy to fall into this trap of elevating tradition to a place where it, is in, where it is inappropriate, of elevating tradition. So, the question is this. Miriam had called Yahushua by another name. Would that have been sin? Yes or no? The answer is a simple yes. Miriam would have been disobeying the messenger. Gabriel but some will argue and say, but sin is only if we disobey the written Torah of Moses, that is from the first five books of the scripture. Well, I will prove to you that obeying Torah means obeying any instructions from Yahuwah, not just what is in the Pentateuch, and that includes the instructions sent by Yahuwah's servants and messengers. Let's look at the exchange between Samuel and King Saul. And Yahuwah said, go and completely destroy the Torah transgressors, Amalek. Why then did you not obey the voice of Yahuwah? And Samuel said, Does Yahuwah delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of Yahuwah? Behold, 
to obey is better than offering, to listen is better than the fat of rams, for rebellion is as the Torah transgression of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idol worship. Because you have rejected the word of Yahuwah, he has also rejected you from being king. So not obeying an instruction from Yahuwah has serious consequences, and Saul then himself says, I have sinned, or by definition of sin, I have transgressed Torah. For I have disobeyed the command of Yahuwah and your word, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now, I want you to consider that. Their voice versus the voice of Yahuwah. Yahuwah says, you shall call his name Yahushua. And the people say, no, we will call him this invented name, Jesus. Who should we listen to? Who should we obey? A messenger sent by Yahuwah, such as a prophet like Samuel, or perhaps a Malek, is under the authority of Yahuwah, and thus must be obeyed. Obviously Yahuwah. Behold, I send a Malak before you to keep you in the way, and to bring you to the place which I have prepared. Be on guard before him, and obey his voice. Do not provoke him, for he will not pardon your transgressions. For my name is in him. For my name is in him. This speaks to the authority in the name. The correct name, the correct and only authority. Now we know that the Torah states that we are required to obey Yahushua. This was prophesied by Moses in the Torah itself. Yahweh your Elohim will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers, that is to him you shall listen. Obviously, Yahushua came in the flesh long after the written Torah of Moses. But then we know Yahushua spoke the word of Yahuwah, and we obviously obey, as he has the authority from the Father, as confirmed by Moses. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doth the works. Now, should we not then pay particular attention to what Yahushua himself says about his own name? I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that ye have not the love of Elohim in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not, if another shall come in his own name. Him you will receive. How can you believe, which receive honor one of another, and seek not the honor that cometh from Elohim only? Do not think that I will accuse you the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? So Yahushua makes it clear that he receives honor from the Father, and not men. This certainly can be connected to the name that he has received from the Father, as opposed to the names given by men. We honor someone by calling them by their proper name. We dishonor someone by inventing a different name. The name Jesus is a result of men not accepting his name as it is. They transliterated it into their own name, giving license to finally turn it into this Jesus abomination just over 400 years ago. Yahushua is saying those who do not receive him, and that goes with receiving his name, also do not believe he has the authority, like Moses prophesied. This authority is, number one, the authority to teach the Torah, and number two, to save those who are lost. He clearly states his name bears the name of the Father. Jesus and Jesus do not bear the name of the Father Yahuwah. Yahushua means Yahuwah is our salvation. That is the name Gabriel commanded Miriam to call him because he will save his people. It bears the name Yah, which is short for Yahuwah. Jesus, on the other hand, conveniently bears the name Zeus. In Mexico, for instance, the name is pronounced Jesus, which means Hail Zeus. Thus we see that this name brings dishonor to Yahushua, the father. Zeus is an abomination. It is another name for Jupiter, which is a name for Satan. No, that's what heaven's going to be like. All of God's children around the throne speaking Spanish. It's going to be beautiful. <laughs> Come on, he named his son Jesus. That was in the book. <laughs> He didn't name him Jeffrey. He didn't name him Jamil. He named him Jesus. So, once again, we can declare that it is indeed a Torah transgression to say Jesus. 
It goes against the direct Torah command. But the prophet, which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or, and this is key, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. So some will accept that Yahushua came in the name of Jesus. Now, the fake name Jesus is simply the Spanish or Latino precursor for the fake name we have today, which is Jesus. If they accept the name, then they make Yahushua as if he came speaking in the name Jesus, which is indeed another god. It is a bold deity. The Torah says such a prophet must be put to death. It is interesting that the transubstantiation cult does indeed call him Jesus. It certainly tries to put him to death over and over again in the Eucharist invention. Yes, our viewers can check out our link for that article. Once again, as I have shown already, what the prophets have said generally becomes a Torah command. It is to be obeyed as were Yahuwah himself speaking. Here, Prophet Hosea declares in the name of Yahuwah. For I will take away the names of Balaam out of her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their name. The scriptures make it plain that we are not to have the names of all deities in our mouths, let alone use them to refer to our Savior. So, this is not a doubtful disputation as some may think. This is not some new territory, this use of pagan names has happened before. I am guessing, if one greeted the President of America with something like, Hail Hitler! one might get into a spot of trouble. I do not think he would accept that as a suitable greeting, but rather an insult, given all the evil connected to that name. I think he might just get angry. The father tells us to respect the son and greet him in the right way. We are warned not to anger him. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Yahushua is our master who sits on the throne, the lion of Yehuda. He is not this gentle baby Jesus idol that the Catholic Church takes out every pagan Christ mass. You know, the way they carry it around and try to blaspheme and put it to death over and over again. The name Jesus or Jesus is evil. It is equivalent to using Hail Hitler. We must stay away from it. I guess some people are going to take offense. Jesus and Jesus are common names given to people today. Well, I'm not going to apologize for the pagan names people have chosen for their child. We all do things in ignorance at one time or another, but we certainly do not want to willfully have the appearance of evil if we are serious in following Yahuwah. If I were so named and discovered the truth, I would change my name as soon as possible. This name Jesus or Jesus has simply become a mindless habit. It does not make it right. Repeated Torah transgression does not make it right. The name Yahushua is a direct commandment, not a tradition. And this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of his son, Yahushua, the Mashiach. Do you not believe that this name is worthy? Do you believe that some other invented name is more worthy? You must do. See, you want to use another name invented by men. So, we've given about eight proofs so far from the Torah. So, let us hold on to that good name of Yahushua. Let us not use an evil pagan name invented by sex and cults and what have you. Let's move on to number nine, which should be enough evidence that saying Jesus is a sin, surely. I mean, this is straight from the Ten Commandments or Ten Sayings. Exodus 20, verse 7. Thou shalt not take the name of Yahweh thy Elohim in vain, for Yahu will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Take in vain means to make of no effect, null or unrecognizable. You take Yahu's name in vain if you take his son's name, which he has commanded, and you exchange it for a name he has not commanded, which does not bear his name. It is unrecognizable. So much so that sometimes when we present the name Yahushua to some people, they look at us as if we are inventing a new religion with some new guru or something. <laughs> yes, like we are the heretics. But this is what they did with the Father Yahura's name, as well, replacing it with Hashem. They made his name unrecognizable. Yes, and in the English Bible they replaced it with the pagan title. The Lord, which is a bald deity. 
This was no mistake being done over 6,000 times. So we should not be surprised that the name of Yahuwah's son must also systematically be made unrecognizable by those who hate him. Yahuwah will hold them accountable. It is serious. So I do not know how people can take it so lightly as if there is no sin here. Come on, people. This is the Ten Commandments. What more do you need? The Torah and the prophets tell us over and over again that the correct name of Yahuwah is important and to be esteemed. The last book of the Tanakh has Prophet Malachi prophesizing this. Then those fearing Yahuwah spoke together, each man to his neighbor. And Yahuwah listened and heard. And a book of remembrance was written before him for those who feared Yahuwah. And then take note, if you are still awake, he says, and for those esteeming his name. You can see how the modern King James here has later tried to correct the name of Yahuwah by removing the pagan title, L-O-R-D, but sadly still used a corrupted version, Jehovah. This is evidence, again, that the translators at least know about the pagan corruptions of the names. But we must use the proper and pure Hebrew names of the Father and Son without any fiddling. Now, some might try and say, oh, but that is the Old Testament, and that refers to God and not Jesus, as they like to call their so-called Savior. Well, Yahushua, the true Savior, on the other hand, who bears the Father's name, says something along the same lines as his Father. Here in the last book of the Renewed Covenant, Revelations, speaking to the congregation of Philadelphia, Yahushua says, I know that you have but little power, and yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. His word here is the Torah preached and lived out by Yahushua. He is the Torah made flesh. Thus, we can clearly see the connection between keeping Torah and accepting Yahushua's proper name. Saying some other name is then a Torah transgression or sin. Now, we could probably keep going with more Torah commands which prove that saying Jesus or Jesus is a sin. I think we have listed about nine so far. But let's look at this from another angle. Should we not follow by example? I mean by following the early believers. Most people usually follow their leader. If their pastor, for instance, calls him Jesus, then they will call him Jesus. But does that make it right? Remember, Apostle Shaul said, follow me as I follow Mashiach. So we should follow someone who is righteous. A righteous person is somebody who follows the Torah, the commands of Yahuwah. Apostle Shaul followed and preached Torah as Yahushua taught when he said, Do not think that I have come to abolish the Torah or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly, I say to you, until Shammayim and Earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the Torah until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of Shammayim, but whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of Shammayim. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of Shammayim. Paul did not relax the law of Yahuwah, and he sought after righteousness. Yes, he obeyed the words of Yehushua. Now, mainstream Christianity teaches that we cannot be righteous. This is a lie. Yehushua has just told us our righteousness must be of an excellent standard to enter Shamaim. Apostle Paul sought after righteousness and the perfection thereof, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the moral conviction of Mashiach, the righteousness which is of Elohim by moral conviction. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Yahushua the Mashiach, what about Noah? He was a righteous man and perfect in his generations. Noah walked with Elohim. Now, let's look at someone else specifically for the topic of this video. A certain priest named Zechariah, who of the course of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Eli Sheba. And they were both righteous before Elohim, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of Yahuwah blameless. So we have Zechariah, who the priest who bears the name of Yahuwah, his name means Yahuwah has remembered. Again, his name is not Zacharias, which removes Yahuwah's name by fiddling of the scribes. 
The Mahalak said unto him, Do not fear, Zechariah, Yahu, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elisheba shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. But there again, his proper name is as follows. Yehohanan. Many shall rejoice at his birth, for he shall be great in the sight of Yahuwah. I am Gabriel, stands before Elohim, and I am sent to speak to you and to show you these glad tidings. And behold, you shall be silent and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because you do not believe my words which shall be fulfilled in their time. And when he came out, he could not speak to them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, and he was making signs to them and remained speechless. And it happened that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and were calling it Zechariah, after his father's name. And his mother answered and said, No, but he shall be called. Yehohanan. And they said to her, There is none of your kindred that is called by this name. And they made signs to his father as to how he would have him called. And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, saying, His name is Yehohanan. And they all marveled. And his mouth was opened immediately, and his tongue loosened. And he spoke and praised Elohim. And fear came on all who lived all around them. And all these things were talked about throughout all the hill country of Judea. It went viral. Yep, hill to hill social media. <laughs> and all those who heard laid them up in their hearts, saying, What kind of child shall this be? And the hand of Yahoo was with him. So let's just get a broad sense of what just happened. Gabriel commands what the name of Zechariah, whose son's name shall be called. But when the time comes, tradition tries to take over, and people are forcing their own hand. They are already calling the child Zechariah after his father. Now, what do we see? We see a righteous response, a righteous example of two righteous people. First, his righteous mother, who gives a firm no and says what his name shall be. She does not give any apologies. A righteous father, then, as a witness, confirms this is so. Now, this is key. It so happens that, not being able to speak, he is forced to write the name. This is when the people marvel. They have two witnesses. It is confirmed. They have heard the name pronounced. They have seen the name written and spelled. This has been commanded by Gabriel. I must emphasize that Gabriel reminded Zechariah that he stands before Elohim, just in case he forgot who the command is coming from. I think we can take lessons from that today. Have you forgotten who has commanded the name of Yahashua? Yes, Yahashua's name was commanded to Muriam by the very same Gabriel who stands before Yahuwah. Is it according to people or Yahuwah? This means it is a Torah command to be obeyed. This means it is not to be fiddled with by tradition. This shows a righteous response to a name that has been commanded. This is a scriptural precedent, an example to follow. This is the birth of the forerunner to the one whose name was also commanded. We are talking about Yahashua. Now, as we joked, this went viral. But furthermore, it says that the people feared. This is a serious business. So, when the time came for Yahushua's name to be named, I do not think there would have been any argument as to what his <laughs> name shall be called, lest you be defying Elohim himself. And that, my friends, is the example we should be following when it comes to obeying this Torah command. The command is, you shall call his name Yahushua. Surely Zechariah and his wife could have said, well, y'all can call him what you like. It doesn't matter. Is that not what they say today? Now, I know some of you will be going, but this was a totally different name, not just a transliteration. Well, I'm sorry to say Jesus is a totally different name. It does not mean Yahoo is salvation, and it refers to a pagan deity, thereby breaking an additional Torah command, as we have shown. We will try to go into all the lame and feeble excuses as to how we got from Yahushua to Jesus in an upcoming video. So, make sure you subscribe so we can keep you posted. The mere fact that more and more people are asking is because they do not recognize the original name. It is a totally different name, not commanded. It has been influenced by at least four different languages into a grotesque Frankenstein. 
It is abundantly clear that there can only be one pure authorized language by which we can call him as commanded in the Torah and the prophets. For then will I turn to the people a pure language that they may all call upon the name of Yahuwah to serve him with one consent. Yahuwah says there is only one pure language. The same applies for his son's name, which bears his name. We do not have the authority to call Yahashua by some other invented, garbled and mangled name forced through for impure languages. That is a Torah transgression. I think we can safely call that our final proof, number 10, lest we go on forever. No, we shall wrap up this discussion with a word from Acts which seals what I just said in number 10. Yerkifo, or Peter, by the power of the pure spirit of Yahweh, declares and confirms that there is only one name by which we can be saved. Or we need to go against the pure spirit of Yahweh too, and call Yahushua by another name? Are we to be Ananias and Sapphira? This is not just a little letter Kepha is scribbling to his mama at home. <laughs> so for dramatic context, I will add some reverb to my voice. Be it known unto you all. Kepha is facing the captain of the Haeckel. He is addressing all the people of Israel. He is at the Jerusalem Council for goodness sake. He is standing before the priests the high priests and Sadducees of Judea. So it's like, really, y'all, <laughs> he says, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Yahashua HaMashiach of Nazareth, whom he impaled, whom Elohim raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under Shalmin, given among men, whereby we must be saved. Now I do not know how much more official this can be. Corrupted as it was at the time, this was nonetheless the government of Sion. If I were, for instance, to stand up at the United Nations under the power of the pure spirit of Yahuwah and declare that there is only one name by which we can be saved, what would that mean? Would it mean that each country representative would agree and then go home to their respective nations and call him a different name? No, that would be a contradiction. It would work against the prophecy of one pure language as in Proof 10. Yahoo's name would be lost when they started pulling off an A, ah, sticking on a J, throwing away another letter, etc. To get to Jesus or whatever other perverted name they could cook up. And that is exactly what has happened to the extent that the Hebrew people do not even recognize their Savior because these imposters violently willfully and unlawfully butchered his name into Jay's use. This smacks of anti-Semitism, but we also cannot rule out so-called Jew flu. Do you want to be part of this wickedness? Or do you want to be part of the prophecy and command of one pure language as commanded by the pure spirit of Yahuwah for his people who love and obey him and honor his name? Remember, your righteousness must exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees, as Yehushua said in Matthew. Is it not the scribes who unrighteously fiddle with the name Yahashua already back in B.C. They changed it to Yeshua and thus removed the Father's name. Did Yahushua not say there should be no change, not a jot or iota? This speaks directly to fiddling with the text of the commanded names. Did they not also remove the Father's name itself and replace it with Hashem over 6,000 times? Thus, in conclusion, this is indeed the sin of changing the word the word made flesh whose name is Yehushua, saying Jesus, is indeed a sin, a Torah transgression.